it is the greatest mystery of the researchers everywhere. It's been the most discussed case in the world all over. It's uh, more been written about it than uh, Amelia Earhart, her disappearance. October the 21st, 1978. A young pilot sets off from Moorabbin Airfield, Melbourne, on a solo journey south across Bass Strait to King Island in Tasmania. If he crashed into the sea, he would have left something. The weather on that night was perfect. The water was like oil. The circumstances that happened is very bizarre. His name is Frederick Valentich. He's 20 years old. Just over an hour after taking off, he's involved in what's been described as Australia's greatest aviation mystery. This is a reconstruction of his last conversation with air traffic control in Melbourne. Melbourne, this is Delta Sierra Juliet. Is there any known traffic below 5,000 feet? No known traffic. Seems to be a large aircraft below 5,000 feet. What type of aircraft is it? I cannot confirm. It's four bright, seems to be like landing lights. At about 10 past seven, Frederick Belentich reports to Melbourne that he's encountered a strange aircraft, but that it isn't an aircraft, it's a UFO. About 10 minutes later, he disappears. His brother, Richard, and the rest of his family have been living with that mystery and the tragedy of it ever since. I remember he was very passionate about flying aeroplanes. The way that Freddie used to understand straight away what to do with an aircraft and how to do it and he didn't want to make mistakes or you know have any blemishes before he become an airline pilot and I remember we always used to say this pilot error is always the fault of most aircraft crashes. The Valentich Cessna 182 left no trace, not a scrap of metal or a smear of oil on land or water. Bass Strait has claimed scores of ships and planes. But UFO researcher Paul Norman wasn't surprised something strange was going to happen that night. He too's lived with the mystery for more than 20 years. He's president of the Victorian UFO Research Society. Six weeks uh, prior to the Valentich disappearance, we were receiving increasing numbers of objects and erratic moving lights all around the area and uh, they reached a peak that very weekend that he disappeared. It was uh, about three days before we could get away from the telephones and start following up what was um, going on. All around Bass Strait they were seen by people along the Great Ocean Road up on the uh, Geelong Highway over there and uh, last witnesses and last report that we heard from were man and his two nieces and son out at Cape Watway actually saw both the aircraft and the object uh, above it. The aircraft has just passed over me at at least a thousand feet above. Is there any Air Force aircraft in the vicinity? No known aircraft in the vicinity. Seems to be playing some sort of game. He's flying over me. During a period of activity, uh, there's uh, a large object operating with small objects. And this was what was happening all around Bass Strait, King Island, and all that. The witnesses uh, said they could see the lights of the aircraft and the object above it. One of the nieces said, oh, um, Uncle, what is that? And he said, oh, it's an uh, airplane light. And she said, no, I mean that one above it. And he leaned over where he could see there was an object above it. Tell the Sierra Juliet, it's not an aircraft. It's... Can you describe the, uh, the aircraft? As it's flying past, it's a long shape. I cannot identify it. It has such speed. Yeah, we don't prolong the story about the UFO. This is something that my brother described. You know, he described it the way he's seen it. Um, nobody knows what it was. Nobody can answer that question. It's before me right now, Melbourne. How large would the, um, the object be? Seems like it's stationary. What it's doing right now is 
orbiting. The thing is just orbiting on top of me. It's also got a green light and a sort of metallic like. It's shiny on the outside. It's just vanished. I went to school on a Monday and it was just a circus. Every kid wanted to know what had happened. I think that was the biggest mistake I made going to school. Instead of it just being a crash into the sea, it had this UFO thing and well that changed everything then. I'd become a big novelty. These people that were a distance away, all they could see was the green light. They were too far away to see the aircraft, but he was describing a light which was maneuvering near his aircraft. And he thought at first it was a uh, military aircraft and uh, traffic control uh, told him there was no uh, aircraft in the area. Is the aircraft still with you? Say again. Is the aircraft still with you? Now approaching from the southwest. The, the engines are rough idling. The sea is coughing. What are your intentions? My intentions are to go to King Island, Melbourne. You see, above him where he was flying, in military airspace, some people say, well, maybe he stumbled across something that he wasn't supposed to see. That strange aircraft's hovering on top of me again. It's hovering and it's not an aircraft. And then he the transmission went blank. The last words of Frederick Valentich were followed by 17 seconds of a mysterious noise. Those who heard it thought it sounded like something metallic was scraping the side of his plane. Then there was nothing, and the original tape no longer exists. So the mystery may last forever. important thing I want to get across is uh, people, more people watch the skies. That's the only way we'll find out and in. I still get ridiculed about it and I get annoyed because if their kids were involved in say a car accident and died and I went around and laughed at them, you know, they would be very upset. My parents had lost a son, and I had lost a brother. If they find the aircraft and he's died, well, it'll close the book, and that's the end of it. And if he comes back, what a circus it is.